Hello and welcome to Sophie and Co. Me, Sophie Shevard Natze. The U.S. governmental shutdown. What is it? A temporary disorder or the symptom of a serious disease? Budget talks are tough in any state as economists struggle to stay afloat among the stormy waves of the global crisis. But is there somebody who benefits from this troubled state of affairs or maybe even controls the winds? In the reality of the global economic slowdown, money still makes the world go round in the circles of vice and lust, political manoeuvring and corruption. Is money the source of all evil or just those who control it? Are banks there to keep the people's wealth or to steal it? Can any government be called honest? Who runs the economic and political scenes? Our guest today is whistleblower Karen Hughes, former senior counselor at the World Bank. Karen, it's great to have you on the show today. Thanks for having me, Sophie. I'm glad to be with you. So the government shutdown. Is the move on the part of the Republicans justified? Is fighting off Obamacare worth all this mess? I think there's something more going on behind the scenes. A lot more, actually. What do you mean? Well, uh, there is a terrible uh, currency problem. We're on the verge of a currency war. The uh, Federal Reserve is printing dollars like there's no tomorrow. And if they keep going, the rest of the world is not going to accept them. As it is, the BRICS countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, have decided that they're going to finance the trade among these countries with offsets and pay for the difference in gold. And but this how is, is that connected the with right the move shutdown, for them though? because the U.S. Congress has been fighting with the presidency because the presidency has been in total contempt. And the highest legal officer of the United States government has also been in contempt of Congress in fighting this international corruption that is ruining the dollar as an international reserve currency. But, you know, uh, economists have been predicting the dollar will fall ever since the crisis in 2008. But the government has managed to keep it afloat. Well, not for long. If you look at what's going on in the gold and other precious metals markets, silver as well, we're headed towards something called permanent gold backwardation. That means that there's a loss in confidence in the fiat currencies that are issued by those private banks, they like to consider themselves as public banks, but they're really owned by private entities. And these currencies are about to crash because they're valueless. That's what always happens to paper currencies that aren't backed by assets. Mm -hmm. But, well, like you've mentioned, gold, gold backwardation, gold is often chanted as perfectly safe investment, an alternative to the dollar even. But how come the price of gold is falling? Because of market manipulation. But that can only continue for so long because the central banks are running out of gold and the rest of the world are lining up to buy them. If you want to buy gold today, you have to pay a premium. What they're offering in the future is called a naked short. They don't have the gold to back those offers. That's illegal what they're doing. I will get back to gold in a bit, but for now I would like to uh, focus on Obamacare. In your opinion, is Obamacare really that crucial for the U.S. economy? What you have is something that's very good for the medical insurers because most of the other countries that offer medical coverage do this through a single issuer. And that's not what we have here. What we have here is a bill that was drafted by the medical insurance companies. It's not good for this economy. It never was. But why? Why do you say it's not good? Because what's happening is the workers that worked full time are being put deliberately on part time basis so that the companies can avoid giving them medical insurance coverage under the provisions of the law. Mm -hmm. You know, this Obamacare thing, uh, I've heard it many times being compared to socialism, communism sometimes even. Do you trace the resemblance? That's just because the mainstream media, when they report about what's going on, are doing it by telling lies and anything that's good for the powers that be. 
The, main, the mainstream media is completely owned and controlled by the same companies, private companies, that own the Federal Reserve System. Most of the American citizens are clueless about the corruption that's rifling their economy. But just to make sure, are you saying that everything about Obamacare is bad? Or are there good things about it? No, of course there are good things about it. But the problem is that the people that wanted to get a decent coverage were not given the tools. They were not given the equipment. They were not given the press coverage, the honest press coverage that a, a, a society needs to enact just legislation. Their Congress people are all bribed by these corrupt forces. So at and this the point, American citizens have zero confidence in their Congress. So at this point, you side with the Republicans for blocking the, 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 the Medicare? I'm not siding with Democrats or Republicans, because both of those parties have been co-opted by this terrible corrupt force that I'm talking about. What we have right now is Americans being forced to get health insurance. How does that go with their love of liberties and freedom of choice? It's not so much a question of being forced. You have to look at those parts of the society that have been thrown under the bus. The uneducated um, children who are not given uh, a superior education like we used to have. We are a society that is giving short shrift to the people that need us. I'm not saying that we ignore the health needs of our country. I'm saying that we ignore the mainstream media because they are not telling us the truth. You know, I've also heard Obama supporters argue that the American capitalism is on the verge of death in its present form, the way it is existing now. And the social injections, meaning the Medicare and Obamacare, are needed is the only way to reform it or save it. Do you agree or disagree with that? The problem is not with the American citizens. They are a wonderful group. Their values are good. It's just that they're not given the tools that they need to have a just society. They're not given the basic information about what is really going on and who's benefiting from the, um, the economies that they're being told. They're being told that they have no money. Uh, they have taken an entire uh, city, Detroit, and declared it bankrupt when what's actually happening is their tax dollars are not even staying in their society. Their tax dollars are going by treaty to the United Kingdom, and then they're being transferred to the Vatican, to the bank of the Vatican. This is not a society that's going to be sustainable on any basis for any reason. But do you feel like American economy is picking up? Because we hear President Obama saying the shutdown hurts American economy, but um, at the very sensitive moment when it has just started to catch up. But um, do you feel like it's catching up, really? Oh, those numbers about the employment are completely, completely uh, fabricated because they're not counting those people who have given up ever finding a job as unemployed. That's ridiculous. The real rate is is just about double what they report it as being. So the American debt looks like a doomed patient. Is there any other possibility for it than just grow into eternity forever? I mean, raising a debt ceiling once or twice a year, what's the problem? The problem is actually when you talk about debt, that our currency is financed by debt. Our currency is issued by the Federal Reserve instead of the Treasury, which is it's unconstitutional. When the Federal Reserve System was instituted in 1913, most of the Congress was on break. They sneaked that legislation through. So the debt is there simply for those bankers to put an interest on it and have it grow and compound every year. The debt is a fabrication. It's probably uh, should be repudiated. Well, but it, it can't be repudiated until you've looked at all of the in implications. But do you think it's going to go Excuse on me? and on forever? No. What I think is going to happen is that at the upcoming Bretton Woods meetings on October 9th, the countries of the world, the foreign ministers of the world, are going to sit down and have a rational basis for currency rather than this fiat currency, which is absolutely, um, what can I say? It makes no sense to anyone but the bankers that are issuing it. So when you look at the concept of the debt, it's much more than just borrowing money, right? It makes you controllable. For example, in the case of the U.S., who controls it? You mean the big corporations or countries like China and Japan who control large chunks of the debt? 
Well, that's a very good question, and fortunately, uh, some mathematicians at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology have given us a very precise answer. They did a study of who owns and controls the companies on the capital markets, 43,000 companies. And they found out that there's a secret super entity, they call it, that owns 60% of the earnings every year and 40% of the assets. They did this by putting the same people on the boards of these companies. So they have 10 times the economic power that they're entitled to. And they thought no one would catch them at it. This is a huge conglomerate that has been rigging the LIBOR prices. It's been rigging all of the commodities prices. It's been uh, trading in the securities markets with insider information. It has got to be stopped. It also bought up all the media and has been lying to people deliberately. This is going to stop. So just to answer my question, the government is controlled by the conglomerate or the corporations rather than uh, countries that are up and coming economically, right? So why haven't these um, corporations or con conglomerate, as you call it, been caught? Why well, is nothing changing? That's the whole point about it. They like to think they're in control, but they're not. They're not above the law. And we citizens know exactly what they're up to. We've been working on this problem. All of the governors of the states have been working on this terrible corruption. So have the attorneys general. So have the sheriffs. And it's not going to continue. The American people are taking back their government and they are stopping this terrible corruption. Mm -hmm.